Hey kids, you're about to listen to a comedy podcast. That means that all of this is medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast, where we discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives without it being so boring. I'm your host, Dr. Lennon Smith.com. I'd like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We've received some feedback about the excessive amount of technical medical terms that I've been using, such as polycythemia and rowdy dow. So I'll try to temper my terminology to a simpler one in the future. Here to help with that is our producer, Cameron. Dr. London, we are right in the middle of casting for the big Jock Doc movie. And I'm, I'm really excited about it, but I did just get word back from some of the producers. You are going to have to reread uh, for your role. I know the original idea was, well, this is the Jock Talk movie. You play yourself. I play myself. Dylan plays himself. Um, apparently, at the test screenings, people didn't believe you were Dr. London. They were like, he's not a convincing Dr. London. Okay. And it's and so uh, that, that doesn't mean you're not going to get the role. It's just the producers just wanted you to read a little bit. Just, just give it another go. Um, it, it just was one of those things. Everyone in the test, every one of the... Uh, test audience members um, said that they would rather have the guy from Coldplay playing Doctor London. The none of them said Chris Martin, so I don't yeah, know if it's that was my question. Another one, but that was that was one hundred percent of the feedback from every person. Okay. No, was I could really see the guy from Coldplay doing it, but just not this guy. And like now that you say that, I kind of do see him being me more than I can be me. But I. It would definitely help our bottom line. Like I think it would, I think it's good marketing to have him attached. He he's more expensive cuz we're paying you in like dog food and like pellets. Yeah. Well, and just be like for those who don't know, if you get paid in dog food and pellets, then eventually you can acquire enough and it, like if there's say a nuclear blast, dog food survives. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's you roaches said, and dog food. You said if you get enough, you can start your own dog food company. And I don't yeah. think you can do that, but I don't know. I've never, I've never looked into it. What do you? Wh- how, okay. Well, how how do you think that I couldn't do th- like? I guess stop it's true. you just like slap your own label on a on a supply bag demand bag of and we've got pedigree. a supply. Yeah. Just and there are a bunch of dogs out there. You start with the you get free samples, of course. I I'm sorry to distract from the movie, but like. Ooh, yeah, we're losing we're losing okay. track of of what we're trying to do here, yeah. Doctor London. I I would love to hear. I mean, I want we need to hear you just read. Okay, yeah. So just do you have do yeah, you have yeah a I have the sides right here. Okay. Um. Okay. Great. Okay. And this. Uh. Do, do I just start from the beginning, or do you want me to come at the action part? Uh, you could just start from the top. Okay. Okay. Wow, everyone. We are gathered here today. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, sorry. To, have, you, have you not gotten, you haven't gotten the updated script yet? Okay. I, uh, here, I'll, I'm this, emailing it to you right now. Just, from 2003, right? Yes, yes. Start off, it should start off, I'm the mayor of Fartsville. That should, do you see okay. where that's highlighted? Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. No, okay, yeah, sorry. This, the I, revised I, script. The highlights, is, one's blue highlight and one was yellow highlight and it was throwing me off. Okay. <clears throat> right, Mayor. Okay. Uh, the, hey, hey, hey there, friends. I am the Mayor of Fartville. W- what is uh, on the agenda today, Mr. Secretary? Uh, yeah, sure. I- I'll go ahead and be Mr. Secretary for this one. Where am I? What's going on? Ha 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 ha. Uh, and that's that was a far i assume they're going to put that in post but that's just for the effect now um, yeah but dylan if you could yeah, enhance okay. that fart a little bit yeah just, and like okay, not a good. lot just a little bit just so that they know um okay so uh d- okay uh what's on the agenda how many are on the agenda oh wait i just asked you that whoops ha 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 so what are you doing later I am racing dogs. I go to the dog track and I race them to prove that man is better than beast. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I was supposed to cut you off there. <laughs> beast, just like from X Men and Mister Beast, like from YouTube and scene. And well, oh. and you're supposed to you're okay supposed to have a fart as sort of a button. Yeah. 
There we go. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you? Um, yeah. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I have the produce, a couple of the producers on the line right now, and they said uh, that was, they're not happy with it, but maybe I can put in a good word because they love my stuff. Right. The, you reading the sides temporarily just to help with the dialogue just now? Yeah, that, that's g- going over very well with them. Okay. Just, just but being a, just in terms of your stuff, the role me. of Doctor London. I, we might honestly, like, if you don't get this part, we might not even have a Doctor London role at all. So it has nothing to do with like you or like you know you not being a good actor. Um, and again, it's not that you're a bad actor. It's just that you're no one believes that you're Doctor London, and they really think the guy from Coldplay would do a better job. And like I. Talent recognizes talent, I guess, is where I'm settling on that. Like, yeah, he got chops. Now, like, does he act? Once again, we don't even know which one, but, like, uh, I, I do see him fitting the role a lot better. Just. Yeah, as far as I know, I don't think any of them act. I think Chris Martin was in, like, extras, the, like, Ricky Gervais show, but he was playing himself. That, that's about all I got. Well, you know, like, it's a, it's a meritocracy, you know? Like, I do want the best one to make it. So, uh, I, uh, I, so, I mean, I, no, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And, like, I, honestly, I think the script's obviously come so far, uh, and I'm, I'm, pretty ex- I'm, pre- I'm excited to see it regardless of how it turns out. You know, like, I, I'm, I want the best to happen, you know? Yes. <laughs> And later, Cameron tells me that we can expect a special guest. That's right, Dr. London. So look forward to that. <laughs> uh, but before we move on, I would like to address a bit of listener feedback. So for a long time, our listener demographic was primarily composed of colorblind people who very racistly can't tell shades of green clothes apart. Uh, but in our efforts to cater to them, we found that we were neglecting the many bot accounts that download our podcast. So uh, from TikTok, we have a comment in our response to my account was permanently fixed by at Linus underscore tech, end quote. Uh, let's see. At Smeepless said, quote, do you have a deadly disease or do you just look like that? It was smiling face with hearts emoji. So thank you so much for that feedback. I, first of all, I love these two part questions. These are really great. Like they're, it's almost like a story. Uh, so for the first part, Yes, we do have a deadly disease called being alive, right? Like, that's terminal. Do the listeners not know that this is like a -a make-a-wish thing? This whole podcast, that's the only reason we're allowed to... Not everyone can have a podcast. The only reason we're allowed to do this is because we're very, very ill and contagious. Yeah, and part of that is like we're, we're white men, and they just don't let those types host a podcast. Uh, like, <sighs> no, unless they're deathly ill. Yes, yes. All of your Which... favorite podcasters, Dax Shepard, uh, uh, the mm-hmm. that redhead guy, Andrew something. Did you mention Dax all Shepard? All of them are really, really sick. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah, Dax Shepard. Yeah. Okay. So that and all of those and his wife so, Elsa from Frozen, or yeah. possibly the other one from Frozen. There's actually no way to know. There's no. Well, because they they're okay in this controversy, but like animated stuff is only maybe real is part of the reason. Uh, and I don't want to get, get it all. That, so, so first part of the question, uh, yes, and then the second second part of the question is, do you just look like that? Uh, so I don't just look like this. Sometimes I put on a hat or uh, glasses. Um, uh, sometimes I put on a... Well, a full fox costume. Like when you're at FurCon or you're hanging out with your furry buddies or you're at the, uh, what is it, like the the fur prom or whatever you go to, fur yeah. picnics. The, the homeschool, yeah. Um, yeah, the homeschool fur you're prom. You're in a bunch of different fox costumes. Yeah. Well, I can't be seen in last year's fox costume. Like, it's so... The, the no, whole... on that I understand. Like, yeah. no one is more particular than the furries. 
But uh, yeah, Doctor London does look completely different because right now he's got his like human suit on, not mm-hmm. not the mm-hmm. fox suit. Yeah, which isn't comfortable. If I'm being honest, it's if I'm being dishonest though, it's actually really comfortable. So, uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much for that feedback. Uh, we have another question here. This is a comment on our response to thoughts on Tyler the Creator. Uh. At Burlington Spotters said, quote, Doctor, what do you think about the rising Trefliot crisis? Now, thank you so much for this feedback. Uh, we get questions about Trefliot a lot. Um, so this seems like a good time to address it. Uh, some people think like, oh, it's some dumb conspiracy thing or whatever. But it's the reports I've read are that it's d- dangerous and unstable. And it's typically airborne, could be spaceborne. Uh, it doesn't have a. It's it's from the least periodic of the tables, but it does have an imprecise molecular weight. So, um, but like, just go to your local depot and get a trephiac detector. And uh, when it rises to, they're asking about the rising crisis. So yeah, depending on the levels of rising trephiac versus falling trefliac uh that's when, when you'd have an issue and this i i've read all the same articles that london has because well he reads them to me when i'm falling asleep so everything yeah, london trefliac. said i yeah. also am saying okay yeah um i'm trying to remember if, if anything else i know like when we've because you you found trefliac in mud you said right before uh well no I found it at a mud vein concert yeah okay okay and uh uh and it, did it taste okay it wouldn't burn like I tried to cook it huh yeah and it just didn't seem to yeah you and the guys from mud vein were you're... really mad because I I was like I was like in the green room trying to like cook this thing. Oh, okay, use because normally you just bring the full grill into like standing room only areas and just cook something. So that's where it was that, originally, that, but I, I I needed like utensils and stuff, so I I just went back to the green room in the middle of the show. Gotcha. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you so much for that feedback. Uh, I hope I hope we answered your question. Um, and then we have, we have one more. This is uh the same on from a comment on thoughts for, uh, on Tyler the Creator. This is from at Freddy. They said, quote, opinion on weed. Um, end quote. So thank you so much for this feedback. Uh, my opinion on weed is that my garden is so dang full of them. <laughs> so, oh, gosh. Yeah. Is that, Not for long, yeah. though, because you just smoke them up. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me and like let me dude, tell you guys a little bit yes. about Dr. London. No guy is the biggest stonehead. Just a weed freak, mm-hmm. just cush just cushion day in and day out. That's kind oh, of please. what Dr. I London cushions. I would say besides being a doctor, your main trait is uh that you're like straight zooted constantly. And you even said yeah, and I, like and I love there's the nothing better it, than like taking a few edibles before going into surgery. And the uh, just the, the I'd like whenever you get socks with with the the weed plants on it and just all the apparel. That's half of it is honestly just for the, the apparel because I think it's so funny. The aesthetic is really funny. You've really gotten into Bob Marley lately. Um, you said you discovered him via the movie, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, well, I like that's how I discovered Steve Jobs too. Just the movie. Yeah. That's how I wa- that's how I discover any of these art. Rocket Man. Th- it wasn't about Elon Musk. It was actually about the uh, that s- singer guy. It was that singing man. Yeah, the glasses guy. Yeah, 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 and the outfits. Pretty. Oh pretty wow! Crazy yeah. Outfits. Like remind me of like my furry days. You know, like. Uh, anyway, so uh, thank you so much for this feedback. I hope we answered your question and uh, keep keep them coming. Now for today's medical topic. Post-infectious glomerulonephritis. Post-infectious glomerulonephritis is in an abnormal activation of the immune system. It can follow almost any infection, but the most common causative organism is streptococcus, as in strep throat. 
uh, one to three weeks after a patient has a throat infection or a skin infection, which is known as impetigo, uh, they may acquire post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So we're talking about post-infectious, which is anything, but usually it's going to be post-streptococcal. But uh, once again, we'll, we're, we're adopting similar terminology. Uh, patients with post-infectious glomerulonephritis present with dark, classically cola-colored urine, okay? Uh, they'll have edema that's often periorbital, which is around the eyes. Well, and, and High blood sorry, pressure. Sorry, what, what about the other patients? The, You're saying other? these patients are doing something or have something. Patients that have blah, blah. But like yes. you, you're you're giving like no attention to the other patients. Like who else is there? They're like uh, maybe like a well, sick me- guy, like a guy with the flu, and maybe maybe another like a wise cracking guy who's got a broken leg or something. I'm just trying to paint a picture here. Yeah. So so we get what the waiting room looks like. Yeah. It's just you you you're putting all this attention on this one specific type of patient, and I'm like, right. let's, let's expand and explore this a little bit. Okay. So. In a given waiting, let's all all paint a hypothetical picture. Sure. So in the waiting room, we have one guy who's there for the hospital Wi-Fi, and he's just holding up his phone, just trying to catch the Wi-Fi. Uh, we have another who's. And am I playing I, that role? Uh, uh, no, you you're asleep in there. Yeah, and it's not from ill. Like you just don't. Uh, like those are the most comfortable seats you have ever found, and you're pretty pump to go back every day just for this and you sit back and you're like guys can you feel this this is comfort and people wow. are like well i can't because you're sitting in there maybe yeah. if you got up then i could give it a try and i say no yeah yeah usually a, a line starts forming uh and there's there is a the velvet rope there that you put up uh but then you just never get up so it's uh once supply and demand issue um but yeah, and then uh, there's also the the guy who's screaming. Uh, that's that's usually you as well. Uh, yeah, in, and I am in, on the hospital sleeping. Wi-Fi. I'm just saying. So I'm screaming. Yeah. I'm on the Wi-Fi. I'm sitting alone in my chair behind uh, a velvet rope. Yeah, um, and then I guess there's the law enforcement that. The I usually have to call to get you to leave at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, Jerry, Samantha, which is like uh, for Thomas, me bit... Officer Thomas. Yeah, 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 all the good guys. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they know the drill. You know the drill. Uh, you're. I have to kick you out just because we're closing for the eat. Like it's not even like you disturbing. Th- it's just like squatter situation, basically. Well, and I'm sure you're. And I'm like at that like, point, I... you're already three, four edibles in, and like probably peaking. And you don't want to have to deal with my shenanigans. I get it. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I got enough on my plate, so to speak. Uh, so these, these patients will present with that high blood pressure, oliguria, which is decreased urine output, and the color-colored urine, um, and the edema around the eyes. Um, urinalysis of patients with post-infectious glomerulonephritis will have proteinuria, uh, red blood cells, and red blood cell casts. Uh, post post streptococcal glomerulonephritis specifically, as opposed to just the general and in- post infectious ones, uh, it will have low complement levels uh, and infections from group A beta hemolytic streptococci. That's strep biogenes uh, is confirmed by streptolysin O or ASO titers, with the best initial test being anti DNA uh, antibody titers. Uh, although a biopsy is the most accurate test, you should not routinely do a kidney biopsy, both because the blood test is sufficiently accurate and because the post-infectious glomerulonephritis usually resolves spontaneously. Okay. Uh, and then management oh, of... Yet another thing where the doctor's involvement is irrelevant. You're either going to get healed by yourself or not. And that's after like a billion bucks is paid to you to furnish your new it, house. I'd say it's... If you have dark colored urine, color colored urine, that is uh-huh. a reason that you want to check on that. Even if you find even out even when your diet is entirely soda, when your diet is entirely soda, you're gonna expect that your pee is pretty dark. I, 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 I guess I don't have a strong. I mean, if you're drinking enough of it, I guess it's hydrated. So, uh, 
Uh, management of post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis does not reverse glomerulonephritis. Uh, so use supportive therapies such as antibiotics and diuretics to control the fluid overload. You, so you can control the symptoms is, I guess, an important thing. Like, remember, you have, you have the edema around your eye. Your eyes are, like, swollen up. So, you know, that kind of thing you can do something about. High blood pressure, which is dangerous. You, you can do something. Fluid overload is what they called me in college. That's absolutely what they called me. Everyone did. Teachers did. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it, was really, it was really cool to see you out there just always chugging something. Never like alcoholic or like it would be juice boxes and stuff. And yeah. you would well, run in and say, so, uh, fluid overload! And just have your apple juice. Well, no, it was soda. I just put it in the juice box container because that's the best container. Just a square box is the easiest thing to hold. Yeah. Yeah. For your stubby thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is part of the lore. This is what people tune into to hear about. But uh, it, this is all in the movie. All the, the movie that you're cut from, this is all in that. Oh, uh, I mean, movie that you're still reading for. Yeah. Yeah, because the producers are still on the line, or is that for me? Uh, that was for the producers who are still on the line, but uh, you could you could take it directed towards you as well. Either way. Uh, th- uh, th- thanks. Cameron, you said that we have a guest today. Is that right? That's right, Doctor London. All right. Well, hello there. My name is Doctor London Smith. dot com, and this is our producer Cameron. Uh, what was your name? Hey, my name's Andrew Nice Clay, the nice man. I'm the greatest Andrew Nice Clay impersonator I've met. Oh, okay. Th- that you've met. Uh, do you run into a lot? I'm sorry to, to, to already jump to this, but like, I, I feel like you're the first one I've run into. Uh, is, do you often run into other... Ones. Dr. London, just to interrupt here real quick, uh, that would make him number one. Okay, that's true. He's the number one Andrew Dice Clay personator, impersonator I've ever met. Absolutely. Okay. No, that's, a, that's a valid point. Okay. Um, so, I guess, f- from your perspective, uh, c- can I call you... Not, what would I call you? What, would you prefer Andrew? Drew? Nice man? The prefer is, is nice... You know, the, the, the middle nickname real hits, but you can call me Andrew. Don't call me Andy. That's just way too, for, you know, you know, way too informal and fun. Uh-huh. You know, and we're not the, there yet. What about, yeah. what about the nice man? The nice man. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I wish I, All right. That's my idea if anyone asks. The, the nice man. Mm. Okay. Well, hold on. That's, if we're getting into licensing kind of questions, um, I hate to like stop our momentum right there, but like, so Cameron does have the nice man licensed. Um, so like, yeah, I did say it. Um, you know, at least a solid second and a half before you said it. So oh, yeah. like, I don't want to. I don't and want so this to be a legal issue, but it, I think it will be. Well, and especially the way we're doing a lot of our branding and merchandising now, we, we're really sort of doubling down on AI. Yeah, and most of the stuff we say is sort of instantly put on t-shirts and shipped out yeah and so like the nice man that's already on a shirt that's on bucket hats that's on like old frisbees yeah really old ones very old um so j- just like when you say if anyone asks it's my idea. I, i'm sorry but no it's it's definitely uh definitely ours yeah but you could say my friend Cameron, he calls me the nice man. That is totally fine. That's within, but I should be mentioned. You should plug our website. So this is, it, anytime you introduce yourself to anyone, you're, you're auditioning for something, you're at the DMV, it doesn't matter. You can say, my friend Cameron calls me the nice man, but that is his property. And that is the property of the Jock Talk Podcast, which you can check out at jocktalkpodcast.com or their Patreon, patreon.com slash jocktalkpodcast. And I think there's just enough space at the DMV these days to be able to write all that down. The way computers have been going. All those computers. But it, we, we have been rambling too much, Mr. Dice Man, sir. What brought you here today? Yeah, you sound like my ex-wife and my son who doesn't want to talk to me. 
And that was that's part of the reason I wanted to talk talk to you. Uh, yeah, my my son doesn't like how I insult him with admittedly very witty witty bobs. This bob, you know. And I, and I, I wanted disease to be able to attribute my uh, asshole-ish misbehavior so I can say, hey, son, it's not my fault. I've got the disease. Oh! Can we get, like, some examples real quick? Like, so, like, I'm your son. I come in. I say, like, Dad, you've been on the couch for two or three days. What's going on? Hey, I'm on the couch, but at least I'm not in the American educational system that has some flaws in it. Oh! Okay, now I see what you meant by the witty. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, ad- admittedly, witty is correct. Uh, now, I y- you asked, and we I get this so often. It's it is kind of my bread and butter, more or less, for my practice because patients do often come in and say, "I want a disease." Uh, th- people say this. Um, usually i'm actually at the other end of it i'm actually usually trying to treat the disease not give it to people so um like like so like for instance if you said as you did that you want something to attribute your behavior to i would actually be in the business of reverse like stopping that behavior so if I were to treat it as a disease, so I don't know if that's what you want. Yeah, but you should. Well, well, I have to disagree here, Doctor Lennon. You would have to diagnose it first, which that's all it is. Is is a person coming to you saying, "What disease do I have?" and you, then you telling them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's say. And it should be noted. It should also be noted that just because people have come to you to have, uh, you know, things cured. They have also gotten sick from you. It's just by accident. You're not doing it on purpose. Most of the time. But if a patient leaves and they're sicker than when they came in, that was not on purpose. That was just an accident because that's how you were. Yeah. And like, and for, for, uh, for me, it was like, on my end, I didn't, I mean, I, I usually don't mean to give them diseases. Yes. I, I guess that's all. I, need. I almost always rarely am trying to get them sick. Yeah, so I think you should do our guest a favor here and diagnose them with stuff. Okay, so, uh, okay, uh, so I think I think we need to hear a few more examples before you just sort of jump into diagnosing. I've got though. some differentials, but okay, okay, uh, uh, like what what is like what is a conflict you've had with your your uh, is it is it a son? Is it stepson? Is it? Oh, it's it's my it's my birth uh, child. I uh, I wasn't there for the birth. I had a I had a hot gig at the YMCA in Sacramento, California, and I, I've never heard the end of that. You know. Oh wow! But the, and even even though the from the kid, the kid was like, "You weren't at my birth." He doesn't remember. Yeah, but my ex-wife, I think she has it in for me. Oh, ex-wives are because I want I want like custody that. on a very a very uh, unique technicality in that I uh, uh I bribed the judge. Oh, wow. I'm a smart guy. Yeah. And oh. Yeah, I mean and that's been so far the most effective legal strategy in the world has been Bradley, just sort of yeah. yeah, like just paying off whoever you need to. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just so hard to come up with uh, legal arguments and precedents. I mean, precedent, how about the first bank of the United States? Nicholas Biddle, am I right? Oh! Uh-huh. Uh, I, this, I, I, this reminds me of some material that I, okay, now I didn't write this, okay? But I worked with a physician who had, so a lot of this ex-wife style material and w- would you mind if i if i pitched one to you well uh you, usually i just listen to andrew dice clay's act and then just write that down but i'll give you a shot kid i'll give you a shot like a doctor shot oh my god I'm okay fire. okay because it's with my pencil right. yeah 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 get that needle yes syringe shot yes uh okay so and this is as it was told to me by a, another physician who under whom I was working at the time. He told me uh, the story. He was with his 
wife and his wife was in a coma. She, she passes out and he takes her to the doctor and the doctor says, uh, don't worry. She's going to be fine. I just need to slap her real quick in the face. And the husband says, wait, doctor, let me do it. I've been waiting to do that for years. Uh, and that's, and that's oh. the, the joke. Yeah. Is that pretty, that's wow. pretty good, right? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I just. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a commentary on both toxic masculinity and bottling things up in a relationship, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it, Dr. Lunda? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good social commentary and just getting into sort of how interpersonal relationships can work and like anger problems and violence and how these things come out of a seemingly, uh, you know, simple, normal relationship. So, uh, yeah, and, which that's my TED talk is about that joke. Uh, I, I actually do go into that quite a bit. Um, yeah, I've seen most of your TED Talk, and it's I, I left, I guess, before that part ended. But the venue was closing. I don't, I don't think anyone was expecting there you like to be there that long. But that's beside the point. I, I, I want to talk to. I mean, Mister Nice Man. Like, why? I'm, I'm. A, I want to ask about the nice part of your name. Why? What? Like, I kind of like. I was thinking, like, maybe this will be, like, a nice guy, like, the nice version of Andrew Dice Clay, but it sounds like you write down his jokes, and then you go to the Y, and you read them off. Yeah, here's the thing, you know, my my kid, his name is Daniel, give a little shout-out on the podcast, you know, anyway, so my kid's like, hey, stop being such a dick in your comedy, you know, it's embarrassing my friends and my girlfriend and, and all these things, and it, so I was like, hey, okay, I'll change my act, and all I did is I changed my name. I just say I'm the nice guy, and uh, so far my my kid hasn't seen a lot of my act, so maybe he's okay with it. He seems a little, uh, a little sad, so he probably he probably knows the lie. Have you told Have you told your kid to shut up? Because like this is your job, first of all, and also like he's not the boss of you. That's your boss at the Y. Here's my conundrum, right? I want to tell my kid to shut up and get in line, but I also want to raise my kid to be the same kind of douchebag, talkbacky asshole that I am. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let his wings fly, you know. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, because you want what you want out of this. From what I can tell, from what you want out of your relationship with your son is, uh, you want to be a pretty hands-off parent, but. To make him as bad of a person as you are, you have to be involved in his life and to, to really put in that time and effectively to be a good parent, it sounds like. That's tough. You said he was how old? Oh, uh, shit, I should know this. Uh, oh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, eight, he's 18. He still lives at home with the old man. Cause, yeah, because of the money. But, uh... Boy, he wishes he could leave. He 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 reads the classifieds he's in the newspaper. The ki- he's a kid and he's reading the newspaper for classifieds, looking at apartments. Doesn't go. He just longingly looks at the listings. Yeah. <laughs> Got to read something. I don't know about that. What's what's what what's a book done for anybody? Am I right? Oh. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> I, oh, I get it. I get. It. I get it. I get it. Okay. Now he why why are his why is he so embarrassed of or like he's embarrassed that his friends have seen your act? I don't understand why his friends are like making fun of him for this act you do at the YMCA, but he's never even seen your show. Yeah, it's a tangled web. Are, uh, we we I, like. I, I I'm questioning if it's truly your act that's his friends are mad about. Have you maybe said some things to his friends that would cause him to be embarrassed? Oh, yeah. Big mistake. They asked me to do the commencement speech at uh, eighth grade middle school going into high school. And I was like, uh, you guys are middle school, more like bottom school because you're so terrible at school. Right, yes. Okay. Wow. And did they... And 
did that go w- well or poorly? How was the response to that? Well, you know, it was one of those things, you know, uh, I think the kids were doing bad in school. They really appreciated it. You know, uh, I autographed a couple F term papers that day. But the smart kids, like my, my, like my kid, uh, no, they, 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 they left partway through. Oh, le- it was okay. a long, it was a long speech. I, you know, it was just, I was, I was on fire, but yeah, you were just riffing, it. going with the vibes of the crowd. That that was leaving. Yeah. For a second, whenever you said they laughed, I, I thought you said laughed, not left, but that, that is a pretty big difference in terms of audience response. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, antagonistic comics. I mean, that's, you know, a reaction's a reaction. Bada boom, bada bing. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Sorry. I first. I just, I, yeah. I, I'm slow. I'm slow. I I just I just still feel like we're getting like a fraction of the larger story here. Because anytime I've asked for a specific one, like now we're talking about eighth grade graduation. Your kid is eighteen now. This is f- five years later. Yeah. I mean, this is every day. I'm just. No, that's what I'm saying. It sounds like you're doing things every day that really sort of like upset your child. And when I've asked, it's like, well, I wasn't there for at his birth. And also in eighth grade, I did like this huge set really just about like school and stuff. It didn't even seem that offensive or like should upset anyone. Yeah. Like w- I'm kind of a boring, what did you say to your son? Boring guy, yeah. what, what did you, did you say anything to your son yesterday? Oh yeah. Yeah. I said, uh, Hey, I'm doing a I'm doing a podcast or whatever. And then he's like, "Oh, that's cool. A podcast." And I'm like, "The podcast for disappointed fathers." <laughs> and then he, That is what they call it. So like yeah. they, our SEO has been boosting that. Uh Okay, and that, and that sorry, I thought the the bit might have gone on longer than that. Then no. Okay. Uh, oh, I get it. Huh. Um, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, have you thought about? Uh, who? Um, t- maybe you're doing fine with. It sounds like you and your son have a decent relationship here. Like uh, you, you say it like you're in. Suff- maybe he doesn't like your comedy. Th- that I could see being an issue. But like, even the famous comedians, you know, they their kids aren't into their stuff usually. So. Yeah, it, it sounds like he still lives with you. Y'all talk frequently. There are these two... T- Ask the follow-up question about which podcast. That's that's pretty significant, I think. Yeah, kind of engaging with the conversation. There's like two specific bad memories. I think maybe your son is just sort of telling you like when you're making jokes at the grocery store to the cashier or whatever, like, Dad, just just stop talking. I don't think I don't think coming up with a disease so that you can justify being just sort of like an annoying guy is really the way to go. It doesn't even sound like you're an at- antagonistic comic like Andrew Dice Clay. It sounds like you're just sort of a, like a normal guy who's just like I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to like work with wood and like build uh mostly clubhouses. Uh, okay, this is this but is a then, lot different. <laughs> but then, you know, my my dad, he wanted me to go in the comedy. Oh. For some, reason, for some reason, he thought it was more economically stable, which did not turn out to be accurate. And, you know, um, my dad's passed, but I just, I, it's just a commitment that I made. I took the whoopee cushion, to, to use a metaphor. Oh, wow. Did he, on his deathbed, say, like, you have to promise me to just keep doing this? Yeah, he said, whenever you make a joke, go O oh, at the end. So they know you're joking. Because, son, your yeah. material's not very good. And then, Can I say, it, it's been super helpful when you've said O oh, at the yeah, end. Yeah, like, that is a legitimately good strategy. Because every time you've gone O, oh, I'm cracking up. It, my mic's kind of you know cutting in and out, so you probably didn't hear it. I'm losing my mind over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah no i get it i get it uh good good but and you see you're bringing the house down but maybe you should only do the com and this is just 
my first attempt at a treatment for this this diagnosis you're trying to have um maybe you should just only keep those jokes on stage and not just constant yeah and not even at like commencement speeches where they probably just asked as like the parent of one of the students you could do it at hired gigs like the gigs it sounds like the ymca actually hired you for a gig right that's work that's great yeah yeah you're right so yeah. just yeah right like could you could you uh what am i trying to say like put together a sentence that's not a uh mild put down with an o at the end or something like that yeah i guess like that like could you could you ask for like a ham sandwich without it including either a or not saying like and i'm not talking about you sweet cheeks or something and it i feel like that's even harsher than the stuff you're saying but i would say skip all of that you can just ask for the ham sandwich yeah it'd be like uh he's really struggling okay Hello? he's got it and i please put the sandwich with ham uh, that, that's my first draft. I think I think it's it, 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 that's all I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, so this is um something something a lot of people struggle with is realizing that conversations are more improv than writing. So, uh, so stand up for, for those who don't know, a lot of stand up comedy is actually written beforehand. Okay. Um, and so what you're doing here, it sounds like you're trying to write a draft of what of like how you would ask someone for a sandwich when really I, I think you got to rely on your improv skills here and you got to just riff and s- just say I, like, could I, could I have I, a sandwich? I disagree please? here, Dr. London, because standups are actually truth tellers. I guess some of them maybe write jokes, but most of the standups I know they get on stage and they just start telling their truth. They get up there. You know how like Mark Marin gets up there and he's like, ah, uh, uh. yeah, really upset. Yeah, and he's like not really upset because the, the thing he's complaining about, he's like, I'm not even mad about it. Um, oh, okay, yeah. and whatever he's complaining what, about, that, which is not interesting or me. funny. Yeah, but yeah. I get to hear Mark Marin tell the truth, whereas I bet Mark Marin when he orders a ham sandwich has to script it. Because that's how his brain works. It's just comedy. It's just making people laugh. Okay. So, so if if you're naturally very funny, and also a truth teller, then when you're not being funny, you might have to write ahead of time, just because you're not in the zone. You're not in that sort of headspace or zoning. You don't know how to yeah. have a normal interaction like a normal okay. person because you're a comedian. You're a different breed. Someone like Mark Marin, someone who sort of has the cadence of making jokes about like kids these days but he's not because he's like trying to be like cooler than that so it's just sort of just saying normal things but just in a sarcastic tone and you're like i don't know where a joke is or a punchline or Mm -hmm. where any of this is which 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 is why you want to hear a A at the end of it yes that's the that's the one thing i dislike about marion is that there's no a's at the end of his joke that tell me like for example that was a complete thought or you were supposed to like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I met Mark Maron once, and I told him, you know, you should say like, "How about it?" At <laughs> yeah. the end of his, uh, oh, that's good. That would be lines. so good. And he, uh, and he asked, yeah, he asked me to leave his shed. I was actually taping a Marin. Oh wow! You, he he let you use the shed. Yeah, he thought he thought I was Andrew Dice Clay. That was why we, uh, that was how we oh, got that. Wow. When... And he was willing to go with it. And let me do it instead, but then I then I, then I I started giving him notes. That was a mistake. I don't know why he's much more successful than I am, and I don't know why I'm telling him how to do his job. It's just, it's just an antagonistic thing. That's that's like my religion. When, when, I mean, to be yeah, I mean, you were lucky to just be able to use the shed at all. We when we did his show, we had to record in the trunk of his car. He said, well, the shed and the garage, all that stuff is like for the big guests, but you guys kind of record here. Then he stuffed us in the trunk of his car and made us record. I've never even heard the episode or have seen it on the feed, but he said it's for the real listeners. Yeah. 
he he also he, he left the car too. Like he, I think he walked away, and I'm not sure to what extent he was actually on the episode. Uh, yeah, that's it, I don't. Yeah, I, I think he said he was going to add it all on post, like his part of the podcast. Yeah, which like he's I he's he's more experienced than we are, so I guess. Uh, oh, but um, so the nice guy. I I wanted to. Um, maybe come up with some drafts. It sounds like we need to come up with normal questions and normal, like, turns of phrase for you, like, when you get groceries, whenever you uh, uh, buy light bulbs, whatever, that kind of thing. Just so you have something in, ready in your pocket that's not jokey. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or even just, like, what, you know, when your son asks, like, which podcast? Yeah. Then you can say... Just tell, yeah, tell him the... The name of the podcast. I, I might have to look it up again. You could, I don't remember. I don't remember too good or, sometimes. Or but, even yeah. you could make a joke about it if you want, but it doesn't have to be that you're disappointed in him. Yeah. Because I'm not disappointed in him. He's a good kid. Uh, but yeah, but then, yet, I mean, you fall into the conundrum because if you tell him that, like, hey, you're a nice kid, he's never going to become the antagonistic AO, Andrew Dice Clay style comedian yeah, I that mean, we need. But I'm just I'm just doing uh, YMCA shots for uh, to use the sauna. I like I like to get nude in the sauna, and I just feel like is that a life I want to give my son? I mean, I feel like I'm too late. He's already had puberty and shit, so he's probably like already. You guys are doctors. He's got like this ingrown uh, nurture thing with the asshole. If I change now, it's, right. I'm just, it's, it might be too late. You, so you think, you think that. I was about to say he has an ingrown asshole. I believe that's a prolapse, right? Or is that, is that, is that the opposite of an ingrown asshole? Uh, I think that'd be the opposite. It sounds like it, that's, he just has a normal one is what it sounds like. Yeah, uh, I don't look too often, but. Uh, is yours outgrown? I don't too much about that process. The, the... So, uh, I have, I have a question for you here. Okay. So you say that. You're you're worried that your son, like it's too late. Did you recently decide that this is the kind of son you want, or have you all? Because you said eighth grade, you were, you know since then at least you were uh, talking this way. I'm. Did you just decide recently, or? Uh, well, here's the thing, right? He's going to college in the fall, and uh, uh, Jerry. I I talked to my good friend Jerry Seinfeld. And he said the college gigs ain't too good for asshole comics no more because the sensitive college students. So I kind of want to be woke now. And I realize that just now, like I want him to be like an antithesis okay. of myself. But I, I feel like that's uh, very strong. So you, raised him, you raised him the opposite of what you now have decided you want him to be. Uh, so you, you keep, I guess, d- how often do you switch the type of son you want to have? Because I think that might be your real issue here, that you just, on a whim, you decide that you want your son to be, to have a different personality. Uh, yeah, it's not am, too, am I, am I? No, I think, I, yeah, I think you're on to something. That, it's not too bad, though. It, it's just like once every season, you know, the, wet, the, the weather changes and suddenly my, my, my disposition also shifts, thawing and freezing. You guys are doctors. I mean, that's, there must be a, human physiological reaction to weather patterns shit yeah i mean it's just it's just uh you know quarterly changes just like a companies and business like q1 you've got a certain interest but that might pivot you can't be like oh why did sony change its mind it's like because it's trying to succeed like you are with your kid yeah and it wants its son to be woke and as opposed to being a mean comic yeah yeah and I wonder if that's why he's such like a good, balanced kid is because I've just been an a- like an asshole from alternate poles. So then he, he normalizes somewhere in the center. <laughs> it's horseshoe theory, but it's your son. Yeah, nature versus nurture. And, <laughs> and you just happen to have guided him. Also, I'd, I'd say also some kids are influenced by things besides their dads. In terms of forming a personality. Well, like the mother? Don't get me started. Oh no, I'm falling into my act. Stop me. Stop. Okay. 
I mean, again, you yeah, haven't yeah, said yeah. anything really that negative about her up to this point. Yeah. Well, the silence is deafening. Because I don't want to talk about that bitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I oh, have word. oh, man. There you go. Right. Was that a joke? Without the O's, it's, it is hard to tell. It sounds like maybe you're, you're kind of in a, an okay place, ultimately. It sounds like maybe you're a little bit frustrated that your son turned out differently than you specifically wanted because you wanted him to be a copy of your personality and then now you're like relieved that he's not and you sound like you have pretty healthy relationships with these people and that you're getting booked um i don't know that i have to help you i guess is what i'm getting at here you know mark Marin is interviewing you on accident but still inside somewhere that's pretty huge uh your kid lives with you it sounds like you have a great relationship with your ex-wife i it almost sounds like your issue is that there's not enough reason for you to be angry, which is probably affecting your act, right? Yeah, I mean, I used to have punchlines about how I hated something. Now I just, I sort of like ramble and say the opposite of a thing like microphone, more like a thing that doesn't make the voice louder. Oh, I mean, you know, and the reactions are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That no, fake laugh it. that London just it. did is the biggest j- laugh I've gotten in the past 10 years, God damn it! I, if you're still getting booked, I'd say it's at least working okay. Well, it, on, on the, that note, I, is, there, um, is there anyone out there that you would like to, that you're a fan of, that um, you would like to give a shout out to? Hey, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this guy, uh, Jason Luna. Uh, he writes he writes real uh, stand up comedy material, which is fucking weird. But uh, and it, he's a he's a voice actor, and he uh, he writes, he directs, he does all kinds of shit. I can't even name it. Improviser at the Groundlings. Get the get a fucking bad comedy act, you motherfucker. That's what I say to him every day. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. How, how can we how can we find him? Is he uh? And I, I'm sure we also want to give you you know find you as well, but uh. How do we find this Jason guy? Uh, is he on Instagram or any of that? Sure, you go on. Uh, I'm more of a Facebook guy, but you go on uh, Instagram, Twitter, all the things, uh, YouTube. Jason Luna one vs one zero zero. If you just if you just search Jason Luna, you're gonna find that guy. He's all over the place. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh. Thank you so much for being on. I, I do feel like you mostly didn't have a problem to solve, but like in a good way, you didn't really have much of a problem, except I guess your understanding of yourself and your relationships with your family. <laughs> you sound like you're generally a very, very kind comic <laughs> who thinks that they're mean, uh, which, hey, that's, that's, I prefer that if, if I'm going to be honest. I, I like it when comedians kind of compliment me when they're trying to roast me uh it doesn't it doesn't happen nearly enough but uh thank you so much for being on the podcast uh thank you to uh our producer cameron thank you to digital the host 